Hello and welcome to this week's Spurverts with me, Jack Bridham. I'm here with my pal, Greg Stobart from Squawker. How are you doing, Greg? Very good, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me again. Good, good. No worries. No worries. Moving on. Great result of the weekend. Obviously, great win. What? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that first. First one of the season. How do you think it went? Encouraging, I think. We are at the stage in that last sort of 20 minutes or so, you started to, started to think, are we repeating the start yeah. of last season again with Tottenham when they were playing well but drawing games they shouldn't have and ultimately that cost them. And after the Everton result, it was really important to get a win mm. with Liverpool coming up this weekend. Showed the value of the summer transfer business. The fact yeah. that we've got Vincent Janssen now means that he can play two up front, Harry yeah. Kane and Vincent Janssen. Some issues with that partnership, but... Because you said you didn't think they were going to start with uh, the two strikers. I didn't think he would, yeah. but it was a good opportunity. I think you were saying this off camera. It was a good opportunity to do it. Crystal Palace at home is the kind of game where you know you're going to have more of the ball. You can try them out together. I think he'll go back to the tried and trusted yeah. against Liverpool, but it was a game Spurs deserve to win, let's be honest. I mean, it wasn't the most encouraging performance, and I, yeah. think, I think Spurs have started a little bit slower than I thought they would but still it was two games in I think like you were saying before like we spoke before off camera and I, you said four points from the first two games is still good like a, a draw away at Everton is a, is a good result and then to get a win as well it didn't come easy uh, which it should have done really having watched the game it's still good to get four points from the first two games yeah, especially I'm considering after last season when we didn't win until our fifth game in I think that's exactly the point two points from two games you say it's not the end of the world, but not yeah. a great start. But four points, it's a solid It's a solid base for Tottenham. And like you said, it's the kind of games that Spurs were losing mm. or drawing, certainly drawing at the yeah. start of last season. You've got the new boy scoring a goal. Yeah. And it was one of those games, I mean, it's such a cliche, but it's not easy. And mm. when a team comes there and defend, Palace were awful. I was really yeah. disappointed with Palace. Even on the counter-attack, you thought they might have a bit more threat with Andros Townsend and Wilfried Zaha, but absolutely nothing really. It was always Spurs to... You could see they were trying, but Zaha and, and, and uh, Townsend, you, you just couldn't really get into the game, could they, I think? And every time they, the, Zaha got the ball, Alderweireld was just reading everything that he was doing every time that he got the ball. Oh, he was immense, Alderweireld. But it felt like one of those games, you know, when if Spurs had scored an early goal, they could have yeah. smashed them. Yeah. They could have run away with it. But We had the, the chances. The longer it went on, especially <laughs> when Janssen missed that one in the second half, yeah. one-on-one, miss it, badly mishit that one. You start to think, is it going to be one of those days? And you start thinking back. Even the players, you know, mentally for the yeah. players, they start maybe start thinking back to West Brom at home or the games at the end of yeah. last season when they've been pegged back. So it's really important to get that win at the end and build a bit of confidence and momentum. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, talking of confidence in Janssen as well, Pochettino said that he expects a lot from Janssen. There's a lot of people out there who I disagree with, and I think you do as well, having heard what you think about him as well. I genuinely think that there's people out there that are, are saying that he's a flop already, and I genuinely think that they're wrong because you can see that he's just a quality striker. Like you said, he backs into people, his strength on the ball and his vision to pick out passes to other people and lay people off. I think he'll get a lot of assists and he'll get the goals. They will come. I think what people's problem is, is he's a bit of a throwback, isn't he? Yeah. He's not necessarily the technical silky skill, get the ball, use his pace to fly past players. Mm. He's an old school but the strength he uses. Yeah. He uses every ounce of his strength. He's backing his big bum into everyone. Yeah. He works so hard, which is massive for someone like Pochettino, to work yeah. great on the training ground and in actual matches. He's got a good left foot. He scored 27 goals yeah. last season. I know you might say Eredivisie is a tin pot league, but it was really impressive tally. You speak to people in Holland and they mm. all say he's the closest we've had to Ruud van Nisseroy and they're convinced that he's yeah. going to have a big future. I think for Tottenham, maybe he's a little bit similar to Kane in that they both want the ball yeah. into their feet and they're more penalty box strikers where when you look, the problem against Palace is still lacking a bit of pace. Yeah. I know we've got Son coming back and we've got Nkudu hopefully one day well, we'll talk about one, one like day that. arriving yeah. to add that pace. But with Janssen and Kane, you're still lacking that little bit of pace, which might be the problem. But the guy, he's getting chances. Yeah. You know, when we were talking about Harry Kane at the start of last season when he didn't score for eight or nine eight games, games yeah. he was still getting the chances yeah. and he said, don't worry, I'm going to start scoring goals. And what happened? It finished the Premier exactly. League's top goal scorer. Janssen should have scored against Everton. Amazing save mm -hmm. by Secklenburg. Should have scored, I at, still, scored at the that, weekend. I, that chance, a lot of people said he should have scored. It was stuck under his feet, and Stecklenburg made a world-class save. I think people, for people to give him stick, arguably he could have scored it, but at the same time, it was a great save. I think you just want him getting in those positions, do, to be yeah. honest. And Which you know, he is. The next one's going to go in, and then once, once he scores the first one, I yeah. think he's going to be flying. And Great options to have, like we said at the weekend. 
there's a very good chance he'll go back to starting with Harry Kane and Janssen yeah. off the bench, but I think he's shown. And also, because of his attitude, because of his work rate, because he gives you something different, because he ruffles up, he's going to ruffle yeah. up some defenders, yeah. he's going to annoy some people. If you're looking for a goal against Liverpool at the weekend, he's a really handy option to yeah. have, and he's not going to come on and make no impact. He'll do everything he can to make sure he has some effect on the game, and I think Spurs need that. No, absolutely. I completely agree with you. Let us know what, what your opinions on Janssen's performance were at the weekend in the comments. Uh, moving on, so we mentioned Kane, we touched on him earlier, sitting, playing behind uh, Vincent Janssen. Um, so, is he, a lot of people saying he's not as much of a threat in that role behind the striker. Obviously, like, like I'm saying, I think Janssen is in those positions where he can hold the ball up, lay off to Kane, where he could potentially score. I can see that happening a few times this season. But he's not in those positions where he was last season, where he's getting those goals that would get you um, the top scorer of the season. Yeah, I think that's fair. He can play in number 10. That's, yeah. I mean, Tim Sherwood, people don't particularly like him, but he used to say Harry Kane a nine and a half almost, yeah. which I can't think is a pretty good analogy because he can do a bit of everything. And when he first broke into the side, even under Pochettino, you didn't naturally think that he was a number nine. You thought maybe he needs someone around him, maybe more of a physical presence like Janssen, but he's just shown he can do it. I mean, the big chance, the closest he came on Saturday was a shot from the edge of the box. Mm. And you're right, if he's playing in that number 10, that's probably the kind of opportunity he's going to get. It's going to be trying to smash it in the top corner yeah. from 20 yards when really you want him 12 yards out, ball falls to his feet and he scores goals. But then he does score those goals from the edge of the box, doesn't he? There were various times last season where... He's on the edge of the box and he just pings one in from about 20 yards. He can do that. He can. You know, you think about you know stunning goals against Stoke and Arsenal, yeah. for example. I think his best position is as the number nine with someone coming off him, which is why I like. I think it's Tottenham's best combinations is still Harry Kane number nine with Dele Alli yeah. behind. And also when you've got that, Dele Alli likes to run over the top, whether it's Harry Kane picking him out, whether it's Toby Alderweire with one yeah. of his long balls, or Eriksen or Lamella. And I think that gives Spurs a little bit more energy injects a bit more into them into attack especially in those games like Palace at home when teams are sitting back yeah. they're sitting deep and they're denying you space. But this is what I like about having Janssen in the team as well is it gives you that option to to have someone like Janssen a more physical presence up in the number nine position but then you can also have Deli Alli making those runs past the defence so you can do so I love the fact that we've got him in the team. I'm sorry, but I'm just really happy with this. Mate, it's just fantastic to, for Tottenham to be able to have those options because mm. last year you knew the first 11 and the first 11 was as good as they could have got. Yeah. I mean, they were, that first 11 was the best first 11 in the league last season. Yeah. But the options weren't there. You know, you're bringing on Ryan Mason or Nasser Chadley or Tom Carroll. Mm. Whereas with Vincent Janssen, with Nkudu, if he comes in, with Son when he comes back, actually you're thinking... Maybe there's a bit more to them, and Janssen just gives you the options to play a 4-4-2, mm. to drop Harry Kane deep. If Deli Ali or Eriksen are off form, you can drop them to the bench for a week, and it's not going to harm you too much. And I think that's really encouraging for Pochettino. Especially with all those games that we've got coming this season, up to about 60 games. That, that's exactly, you've got gonna be 38 ideal. Premier League games, plus the Champions League, plus the yeah. FA Cup and the League Cup. You're going to need a full squad. Exactly. Uh, now, so moving on to Wanyama. Got the goal against Palace. Massive goal. First home, on his home debut, first goal. Brilliant for him. What did you think of Wanyama in the game against Palace? Well, he's already seems to be a massive hit with the fans, and it's yeah, not just. Fan, I've said here, a fan favourite yeah, already. And it's not just the spaghetti yeah. tweets either, is it? He's actually quite good when he's on the yeah. pitch, so that yeah. helps as well. I mean, you can see why they did it. I think they were arming and arming a little bit with Wanyama because he's not the best passer yeah. of the ball, but what he's good at is what he does, yeah. which is defensive awareness, his strength, uh, his movement, his power. Pochettino knew him really well. He's had a full pre-season, which yeah. is really important. You know, you do still look at someone. Eric Dyer still looks a tiny bit off the pace to me, whereas Yammer's hit the ground running. Had a good pre-season. I think it was telling that against Everton, Pochettino brought off Eric Dyer yeah. and he left yeah. Juan Yammer on the pitch. Then he's popped up with a goal this weekend and he's slotted in seamlessly. And, you know, there's a lot of debate about uh, the transfer market and who you should buy and buying players from abroad. But... Wanyama signing shows, one, the value of signing a player with Premier League experience mm -hmm. and two, the value of signing a player that the manager already knows because he looks like he's been there forever already. He's slotted in perfectly. Um, but he, the debate is this at the moment. I mean, we were just discussing this before coming on. Can you play Wanyama and Dyer together? I want to ask you that. And also, when Dembele comes back from his suspension, what happens then? OK, so I think the wanyama Dyer combination is possible if you're going to do an old school yeah. Jose Mourinho snide little move you know remember when, remember when Tottenham played 
Chelsea in the cup, in the cup final, yeah. and he played Kurt Zuma in yeah. central midfield. One of those, you go to Old Trafford, Man United are flying, play Dyer and Ranyama and just try and block it out. Even with Dembele with them, and you just try and block it out, play for the draw. Personally, I think you need one defensive-minded player, so Dyer and Dembele, Di sorry, Dyer and or Wanyama, and then next to them, Dembele, or even Harry Winks, yeah. someone with a bit more creativity. Because even against Palace, there wasn't a, you didn't have that much dictating of the play. Mm. Despite all the possession, there was no one who could really change it in a second in central midfield. They had to fit it into Lamella, really, yeah. to try and make something happen, or into Janssen's feet, which was a really important move. I think as the season wears on, I think Spurs will be looking for a bit more balance with defensive mind and then someone a bit more creative and attacking. I, I don't also, know what you think, mate. Well, I also think having those two, uh, Wanyama and Dyer, in the middle there, for instance, if you're playing in the Champions League away at an Italian team and you need to hold on to, to a result, I think using them two in that, in that deep midfield role is solid. It just solidifies that it's like a back six, isn't it? You've got our, our, our defenders and then you've got those two. It's like a solid wall. And those yeah. two are hard to get past. So I think when it comes to these European games that are going to be tough, I think he might use those two if you're trying to keep hold of a result. I mean, it just shows how good Dembele is because he does everything. He yeah. does the defensive stuff and then he carries the ball 20 yards and starts an attack as well. And he's mm. so strong as well. And last year, when Dembele was out, you had Ryan Mason coming yeah. in and the results showed that it wasn't good enough. I yeah. mean, you know, the results with and without Dembele were shocking last season. Whereas with Wanyama in there, you can trust the team a bit more. Well, you've already seen what, what he brings and, and you know, the fact he can help our team get those results. So I think that I'm really happy with, with our signings that we've done this summer. Let us know what you think about our signings this summer in those comments. So we'll move on to numero five. And this is, this is something that's really confusing a lot of fans at the moment, is our deal with Marseille. So I don't know if you know, uh, Marseille are currently um, potentially going to get taken over. Um, at the moment, we've got the um, Georges, Kevin and Kudu deal, swap with uh, NG, maybe going to them on loan. So it's all pretty confusing at the moment. So if I, I'll just give you a bit of a run through of what is actually happening. So here's a Marseille timeline. So back in July, the president of, of Marseille resigned. Uh, Spurs were then told to get a deal done if they wanted to get Nkudu uh, to White Hart Lane. So they then did a medical with him and agreed personal terms with him. Then the Marseille head coach insisted on a replacement, which was that Nguy had to go the other way on loan. Although uh, Spurs and Nguy took time to consider this, I think yeah. Nguy didn't necessarily want him to go. Uh, Pochettino really likes Nguy. Obviously, he wouldn't have signed him in the first place. So that took a bit of time. And then the day after, Nguy actually agreed these personal t terms to join Marseille. The new members of the Marseille board wanted to review this deal. So then that obviously stalled things a lot more. And then now there's a new president of Marseille and he's demanding additions to be made to this deal, whether it's add-ons in terms of performance-related add-ons. So these negotiations are continuing. So I don't know if you know the latest on this. But it's, very it's a very confusing situation. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. We talked about this in Spurverts last week as well, actually. It's going to happen eventually, I'm pretty sure. There's a reason why George Kevin and Kuda has been stuck in a London hotel for four weeks and he's not gone back right. to Marseille because it is going to happen. But I think it's both clubs. I think the truth somewhere in the middle because, yeah, Marseille, they had a regime change and they moved the goalposts a bit. Mm. But also Tottenham, I think, reconsidered and they tried to use that instability at Marseille to to drive the price down a little bit, and there was a little bit of a standoff there. Oh, Daniel Levy. Lots of, politi <laughs> lots of politics going on, can you imagine? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you're coming into Marseille, you, you want to show, you know, you don't want to lose face, you yeah. want to show a bit of strength. So it's been a really complex deal, but it sounds like over the weekend they were pretty confident that finally they got it over the line. And okay. Pochettino says he wants three players, and obviously Nkudu is one of them. Uh, the Espanol goalkeeper, Paul Lopez, is another one. And if he can, he'll get in an alternative to Christian Eriksen, someone like Ante Koric, but they're banking on Nkudu eventually signing. I heard that Koric might not happen as well because there's other teams interested in him, so that might obviously stall that. But also, you know, we've apparently agreed this nine, it's between nine and 11 million, 11 million. isn't it? Is it actually 11? So that's all been agreed. And the, now there's a potential buyer for Marseille Football Club. Um, and he might name Marcelo, is it Marcelo? Marcelo Bielsa. Marcelo Bielsa. So he, was there, he was there until the start of last season, then left. And he got the Lazio job. He left job. after one game, then he, went, he? then he got the Lazio job this summer and left after two days. So he's a bit of a crazy character. And he's actually Pochettino's mentor. mentor yeah. yeah, he was his coach at uh, Newell's. 
I think it was Newell's, Newell's Old Boys. Yeah. He was the coach there, and Pochettino's style is very much based on Bielsa, and Bielsa brought in Kudu to Marseille last summer in the first place. So some interesting uh, yeah, dynamics there. Uh, yeah, so obviously we'll have to see how that one pans out. So moving on to the final topic today, Son, Hyungmin Son has been linked with a move to Wolfsburg. Apparently, this is all apparently, there has been a 20 million euro deal agreed. Not heard it. Um, last this night, is via Waz Sport in Germany. A, a lot of the German press are quite reliable as yeah. well, so maybe there's something in it, certainly some interest. I can't see Tot Firstly, I can't see Tottenham selling for 20 million euros when they spent 22 million pounds yeah. on him last year. And the plan with Son always was to give him a year to bed in and then the second year would be his big season and there were some reports a couple of months ago that Spurs were ready to sell Son and the people at Tottenham said you know if there's a ridiculous offer yeah but at the moment we're banking on him we yeah. think that he can come in and he's got a really big future quite different to NG actually you mentioned Pochettino's a fan of NG but actually from pretty much his first training session he was quite disappointing in training right. NG even some of the academy kids were showing him up but Son's actually they feel he's got the potential and you know, he scored loads of goals in Germany. He's got a bit of pace as well, yeah. something Tottenham are missing. Well, he at the also moment. scored some hugely important goals for us. Remember ones against Palace, Watford, Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea scores, right. even though we drew, we drew that game. Um, we all remember that game. But it seems a bit harsh on him to, to get him, usher him straight out the door after. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that, version, I don't think they'll be ushering him out the door. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. think if it's going to happen, it will happen for more than 20 million euros, and it will happen because he's pushing for the move, yeah. not because Tottenham wants to sell him. Pochettino made it, made it pretty clear who he wants to go. I mean, they, yeah. for all the talk about NG, they were pushing him out the door. He's pushing Bentaleb out the door. He's pushed Fazio out the door, but he wants to keep human son. So it would take an offer of more than 20 million euros. There we go then. Heard it here first. So that is it for today's Spurverts. Thank you very much, Greg. Cheers. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you do. And also follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is your regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. This week, of course, all about what we learned from the Crystal Palace game on Saturday, which we won 1-0.